Greetings, everyone. Greetings, family. Alafia. How's everyone doing? Blessed love to everyone. How is everyone doing? The collective. Greetings to you. Greetings to your higher self. Greetings to your ancestors, those who continue to um, uphold you and support you. I greet them. I greet your higher self as well. And I just wanted to say hello. I miss you all a lot. I haven't been on live, live in a talk in a long time. Well, it feels like a long time. And so I wanted to come on and tell you that I've been thinking about you. And I I am um, grateful for you. Grateful for your work. Thank you for being here. Thank you for choosing to come to Earth to be a part of the um, raising the vibration of humanity. So um, today, I want to talk a little bit about... Uh, hey, Shanika, how you doing? Namaste, mommy. How are you? Today, I want to talk a little bit about... Um, this time that we're in, there's a lot of changes going on. A lot of us are experiencing sort of eruptions, disruptions in our lives. A lot of us are experiencing a lot of extra energy, low energy. Myself personally, I've been working through lower back pain and knowing what that actually means, a lower chakra area, dealing with interpersonal relationships, um, a little bit of power, um, working on myself because my lower back has been ha has been hurting me, which is something that I've struggled with all my life, having to carry a lot of responsibility. So my lesson has been these past couple of days are ways of looking on what's bothering me in my body and what's going on and energetically what is spirit asking me to do in order to heal. And that is, this is actually what I teach in my class, how to do this for yourself, but I do it for myself all the time because I'm always working through my own things as well, mainly the lower back pain. But <clears throat> I wanted to come on and just talk a little bit about this time that we're in to give you some encouragement. Um, I have to tell you, family, you have to continue to work with your ancestors. Now, I know a lot of people when they say, oh, ancestor work, I don't know, I don't know about all of that, blah, 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 blah. Listen, whether you believe in it or you don't, it exists. The fact that you are alive is evidence that you have ancestors, right? So when honoring your ancestors, hey, China, how you doing? So in honoring your ancestors, which you have the same spiritual, physical, and DNA of them, you honor yourself and in talking with your ancestors and I only I tell my students you know when you're working with ancestors always call upon your highest and most evolved ancestors because we all have ancestors and if there were assholes on earth chances are they still have that asshole energy on the other side and you don't want them messing in your stuff you don't want them messing in your business and if you don't know direct ancestors to whom which you can connect the love, sacred energy that you're desiring, that's fine. You always call on your highest and most evolved loving ancestors. They may be generations back, people you've never met, but they are there. And their DNA is in with you. And so when you call on it, you're calling on, you're calling on that energy that's already inside of you. And this is why I say you don't need... A whole bunch of divinations done for yourself. You don't need, like, there's a video that came out. I don't remember the beautiful priestess name. You don't need Baba Lao to be doing all this stuff for you because you already have the power within you to do it. You just have to believe and trust that it's there. But ancestors are very important at this time because they're asking for your attention, they're asking for your time and for your connection. They're saying, hey, it's been a while. And I know we had a relationship and it's kind of been, you know, here and there. But I would like to commune with you. There's some things I want to share with you. And there's some things that maybe we can talk together and we can help each other. And this is how relationship with ancestors should work. It should be symbiotic, meaning give and take. Give and take. Sometimes, people don't believe, but sometimes there are ancestors that are there that will only attach themselves to you because they want your energy. And you feel like you're being drug around, having to do this and having to do that. And you're not really wanting to do. And you're wondering why you're feeling this way. You think like you're serving your ancestors, but you feel drained. You have the right to disconnect. You don't have to do these things if, if you don't want all this. Even what I'm sharing with you is, is definitely for um, reason of education. You don't have to do these things. If you feel that any entity or any person is pulling and draining and you don't have a connection, but you have an attachment or they have attachment to you and they are your ancestors... You can tell them they can kick rocks. Send them to the light. 
and ask your highest evolved ancestors to come. Those are the ones that have the wisest intelligence. Those are the ones who have prayed for you, who have seen you seven, eight, nine generations now and said, oh, this one is coming. This one is coming. Let me tell you something the other day. Um, I take buku herbs. You know, this is the work that I do. So I always stay on my regimen. And in the dream that I had, <clears throat> I saw one of my ancestors had to have been at least eight generations back. It was a long, long time. And she's stirring a pot. She's stirring her pot. And she sees me in her pot. But I'm in this vision seeing my ancestor seeing me in this pot because she has prayed for me generations. So just because I don't have a good, the best relationship with my mother or my grandmothers, my auntie, that feminine energy... I don't have to disconnect myself from the beautiful ancestral energy that's available to me through other ancestors who want to connect. You know, so don't limit yourself <clears throat> to the people that you've known in life as your ancestors. You have so many people going way, 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 way back that really love you. They ain't with the bullshit. They're not with the judgment. They're not with the, the aggravation. They're not with the hate. They're not with any of that. They're just saying, I love you. I really, really love you and if you can allow yourself to open your heart to receive this energy I want you to know that it's there I want you to think if you can just for a minute let's not let's pretend you maybe you had a great relationship with all the females in your family but in me that was not the case so I had to really work hard of um of connecting to that divine feminine love that I was looking for or in the divine masculine love I have to really work at it because I don't I haven't really had that experience in this physical realm. So you know this imagination, this spirit has to be strong to connect to that. But connect to your highest and most evolved ancestors because they really and truly, truly, truly love you. They, and and they're, they're gentle. They're kind. They're very affectionate. Doesn't that feel good? Just to think about affection. Touching. They want to touch you. They want to stroke your head. They want to see you smile like you were a baby. They love you. Those are the ones, <clears throat> especially in such changing times that we're in now, those are the ones you want to connect with. Yes. Let's talk about comfort for a minute because you know we need to connect to our ancestors and however you do it is your business as long as you do it and consistently. But wait, one second. They gave me some downloads last night. I don't want to miss anything. They wanted us to remember that they are in our DNA. They are part of our mind-body connection. So as you honor your body, let's say with rest, as you honor your body with good foods and sunshine and good hugs and good company, you are also honoring your ancestors because they are inside of you. And they still feel that vibration. But guess what? They feel it through you. So another way of ancestor veneration is to honor yourself. Part of the second chakra healing um, excuse me, the third chakra healing is self-honor. That's that gut feeling. That's that <clears throat> you feel. That's that voice that tells you do this, do that, that wisdom. Yes? That's part of that ancestral connection. Guess, what's out, guess what else is at the um, solar plexus as well, that area? It's your navel. It's how you're connected to your mother, your ancestral mother. Yes? So it's important that we remain in good connection with ourselves, good connection with our body and our ancestors. And we can do that in how we take care of ourselves. What is it that we put in our minds? The other day, I was thinking, <clears throat> and sometimes our self-talk is so damaging. You know, we're so harsh because we're taught to be hard on ourselves. We're taught to say, you know, you're not smart enough, or that was stupid, or how can you do that, or you're not, you're not doing enough, or this. We're, we're, we're taught, especially indigenous people being in an oppressive system, we're taught to keep the negative self-talk and the tape going in our minds so we continue to go down a pathway of destruction. But no, 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 no. Mind your self-talk. Mind your thoughts right now. How do you feel in this moment? How do you feel? Are you happy? Are you contented? Are you relaxed? Do you feel anxious about something? This is very important for you because these are energetic tones and energetic frequencies that may be signaling your attention to say, hey, love yourself a little bit more. Be gentle. Be kind. Say something beautiful about yourself. Admire where you are at this moment. Be at one with yourself at this time. 
<clears throat> as you're being gentle with yourself like you would a brand new baby, a newborn baby, you will feel, you will start to feel your energy return to you. Another thing. A lot of us have to call back our spirit. What do you mean? Call back. I'm still alive. Where did my spirit go? No. What am I saying? When you go through a lot of things in life and you don't have the time to repair yourself and you don't have or the tools or the know-how. Some of us just don't, we don't know. To repair ourselves, a lot of our parts get fragmented. Like a piece of paper and you just keep tearing a piece, tearing a piece. Every time something happens, a piece is torn off and nothing's there to replace it. After a while, that paper is kind of worked it down to a little, little piece. But what you can do, right now in this moment, you can call back your soul. So I call back my spirit. I call back my energy from any situation, circumstance, problem that might have taken my power from me. I call it back to my body right now. Let's do this together. Call back your energy. Call back your life call back your spirit back to you you will start to feel your energy come back because a lot of times it, it leaves yes but you can you're bringing it back just tuning into us talking right now i know you can feel the energy call on your highest self to return to you because it is your power and remember this whatever you put your focus on in life you give your energy to so if you're focusing on problems if you're focusing on environment money and in a negative way, it's draining your energy, you're giving your energy away from it, call your energy back to you. And when you call your energy back to you, evidence that is coming back will be an increased joy, increased peace, increased love, increased satisfaction of who you are and what you've come here to do. If you're in business, and I sense that a lot of people are in business, are thinking about business. You need to go on business for yourself. Because what it, business does in this plane, this physical plane, it gives you more control over your time and your resources. You see, you're not put here to just work forever. You're not put here just to just do something for something outside of yourself. Now, you may love your career. It may provide a great living for you and your family. But you're here to serve your soul first. Your only work is your soul. Secondarily is everything else. So one of the ways of getting free is entrepreneurship on some level. If it's through craft, if it's through herbalism, if it's through teaching, if it's through writing, grant writing, if it's through business development, whatever it is, trucking, whatever it is that you do, that is your contribution to the world and this is what you're here to do. And that's another way to feed yourself, not just physically food, but energetically, because as you give it out, it comes back. As you give it your passion out and what you're doing and you're giving love out, like what I'm doing right now, I'm giving love to you, I'm giving passion, it's feeding me. Yes? So as I give, it feeds me and now it's symbiotic and now it's balanced. Now we have my aunt and now we are balanced, right? and you feel better and your energy is great. So remember your ancestors, remember what they mean. They are part of your body. When you honor your aunt, your own energy, part of that is honoring their energy. <clears throat> you also wanna set up an altar and have time to talk with them, commune with them. I just wanna remind you that you're not separate from them. They're not disconnected from you. You can connect to any ancestor you want and the ones that don't serve you too well, the relationship ain't good, it's okay to send them to the light. You can chuck them. It's okay. I've done that before. And that was probably the best, one of the best things um, I could do because my current, my current spirit team at that time wasn't serving what I needed. And I told them with love and light and I had to let them go. And some were a little stubborn, got firm with them, and then things started to open up almost immediately. So I want to encourage you, continue to do that. Thank you. I see all the lovely comments. I want to thank you. And I just want to acknowledge that I see that you're here. I see everyone who is listening right now. I see the male energy that is represented here. Thank you. And the female energy. I love you all. The universe is wildly in love with you. And all is working out for your good. I want to make sure that I share with you that it's very, very important at this time that you remain in comfort. And I really do mean that. A lot of times you go through life and we just deal with things as they are. We deal with life as it comes and we hustle. But it may not be comfortable. We just do it. We just grind through it. Spirit is saying this, that time is about over. That time of just doing things just to do it. That time just to make people comfortable. It's over. It's time for your comfort. 
It's time for your joy. The seasons are changing, so you need to adjust to get what you need to make it comfortable for you. Is your home comfortable for you? Is, your, is the colors in your house, is it comfortable for you? Are the foods you're eating, is it giving you joy? Let me tell you, this, this rising, I had warm coconut milk with a little bit of tea. And I mixed the two together and I drank it. And that coconut milk was so fatty. And I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. It feels so good. so nourishing. That's what you need. Comfort yourself. You see now? It's getting cool now. My feet start to get cold. Those little things are important to me. And someone must say, what do you mean socks on your feet? That's weird. That's very important to me. Don't take these little nuances that you have for granted. Put Eat the foods that you like. Um, put the music on that you like. Set the environment. You are God on earth. Why should you live in hell? Huh? You are God on earth. Why should you live in hell? Set the environment for you. If there are people in your lives that are not vibing with your environment, deal with them with love and light. If there are those who are in your space or crowding your space, find ways to rearrange the relationship that or that that actually honors you. Because in honoring you, again, you're honoring your ancestors. Okay, that's very important. The two are not separate, but they're together. And sometimes they're together and they seem separate, but they still are one. That's kind of the dichotomy, the duality of the universe. You have to understand that. But find comfort in your life. Put on a sweater. What I do, I get a big blanket sometimes and I wrap myself up. And that's to me, that's so comforting. And I drink coconut milk. That's very comforting. I like things that are creamy sometimes. Um, today I had, um, for lunch, I had quinoa, cheesy quinoa with broccoli because the cheese was vegan. It was really good. And I had the coconut milk because it's about your comfort. It's about you being relaxed. It's about you being back kind of in your mother's womb, if you could think about it, where it's soft, it's warm, you're being fed, you're being nourished. It's time to nourish and to comfort yourself in all things. Wherever you go, make sure you're comfortable. Make sure your energy is comfortable. That's important. And last but not least, I wanted to just remind everyone and encourage you as well to just remember that Thanksgiving is everything. One of the highest, the way to raise your vibration immediately in life is just to be thankful. Just to say, you know, remember, remember something you used to want. You really, and you prayed to the ancestors, you prayed to the most high, and you worked so hard. You really, really could have been a house, a car, relationship. And you really want to, oh my God, if I got this, my life would be so much better. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. And then guess what? It manifested, right? And then it manifested. You're excited. You had it. A couple months later down the road, that car is not getting washed every week. You know, there's crackers in the seats. There's stuff everywhere. You know, um, that house you wanted, you know, no longer exciting. You're not cleaning like you used to with the same joy. That relationship, now that man getting on your nerves. Now that woman, you can't stand her. Or now her feet stink. Or now his fart stink. Or whatever it is. Like, oh, Lord. But you forgot. You prayed for it. You forgot you needed it. So that disconnection that happens over time, can, that bridge can be closed when you're thankful. Thank you for my spouse. Thank you for my children. I know it's, I know I'm tired. I know my back hurts. I know it's a lot, but I thank you for these beautiful children. Thank you that I can bear children. Thank you they're healthy and they're strong. My house, I'm so grateful that it keeps my family protected. They feel safe. We create sacred space, love, joy, peace here. I thank you for my home. Thank you for my car. No matter what kind of car you have, be grateful that it gets you to where you have to go. It transports you to another vehicle of transportation to move you about your way where you can be happy, where you can be joyful, where you can make money money if you're in business or you can get to work if you're working you can get your kids safely I thank you now don't we like that now now your spouse doesn't feel like they're being um, not tended to uh, what's that ingratitude I'm sorry I speak several languages and I have a spirit language in my mind too so I apologize <laughs> if my words don't come up all the time <laughs> but it closes the gap now your, your partner feels appreciated now your children are happy. Now your home is happier. You have peace. You're sleeping better. It's like you have that same excitement again when you first desired that object or that thing. It comes back to you. Thanksgiving helps to do that. It keeps you content. It keeps anxiety away because if you're thankful for everything you have now, you count your blessings, you, your, main, your mind can't think about what you're worrying about because you have so many things to be thankful for. 
You have so many. You're breathing. You're eating food. The, the sun is shining for you. You have water. Thank you. for When I do at nighttime, I start from the bottom of my feet to the crown of my head. And as many body parts that I can name, I'm thankful for. Thank you, toes. Thank you, toenails. Thank you, ankles and shins. And, and I go up, 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 up. And at the end of the night, I'm ready to go to bed. Because <laughs> I've, I've given so much gratitude. I'm so light. I'm so airy. I'm so happy now. I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> and I'm sleeping well. The ancestors are appeased because I am appeased. And so remember, it's symbiotic. It goes both ways. So gratitude is so important. And when you're in gratitude, your mind can't go to anxiety and depression because your vibration is always up here. You know, anxiety and depression comes down here. Gratitude raises your vibration. It lightens you up. It eases your mind so you can think of ideas, concepts, thoughts to improve your life. Business ideas, things you can do, places you can travel, what's waiting for you introspection astral projection one of some of you wanting to connect to the spirit realm in such a deep way gratitude there's some other things you can do too with herbal medicine and meditation to get you there your life is truly magical and you already know it spirit just wants to remind you that you and your ancestors don't try not to separate the two so much that it's like they're all the way over there and you can't contact them and also don't feel like you have to take just anything from anyone or any ancestors or just whatever whoever's up there no call on your most highest and evolved ancestors those who love you dearly and if you don't know what that feels like because of your family relationship ask them find things that you love find um things that really bring you joy and Think about that energy and bring that energy when you go to our ancestor table. If you don't know what they look like, <clears throat> put things up there that you like. There's something there that's inside of you that's still part of them. Put something up there that you like. Spend time. Be consistent. Because you're not doing it for nothing outside of you. You're doing it for yourself. This is honoring yourself. You know? This is self-honor when you honor your ancestors. You understand? So it's very important you take time to do this. It's very important that you take time for yourself that your comfort is so important you wouldn't invite someone to your house and just have them sitting on a stool with no back and um, you know with their clothes on you wouldn't invite anyone to your house just uncomfortable why should you be in your house uncomfortable why should your ancestors be uncomfortable make your life about comfort and if you need more time to do that find ways to make time if the children need to go to bed early they must go to bed early if you need to get up earlier for yourself, you must get up early. But it is worth it. Because the payoff is 10 times more than what you put in. Because you're a winner. And that's winning. That's winning at life. This is winning at life. So, I, I, I just want you to be mindful of the internal veneration and the power that's inside of you to do this thing. Um, you're loved. You're loved. Stay in your thanksgiving. Stay in your peace. Stay happy. Stay comforted. Stay just being you. That's it. Now, we do have Caribbean Healing um, and Herbalism 101 coming up October 28th. This is a class that I'm um, teaching. And it is for those who want to learn how to heal themselves, how to look at others, and um, help to sort of diagnose energetically what might be going on. For example, those may have like um, high blood pressure. Um, there's several ways I teach you how to look at high blood pressure. Uh, it could be from self-forgiveness. Um, it could be from self-unforgiveness. It can also be by too much responsibilities, taking on too much energy. It could be an energy imbalance. So we teach you how to work with energy and herbs to help to heal yourself and those who you love. Because we all know we have to heal ourselves. That's what we have to do. You give it to somebody else, you're going to get the results they give you. Okay, you can't complain about that. But you do have power and energies that's available to you. So Caribbean healing and herbalism, we talk about that. How to combine herbs, how to put things together, um, how to make sense of healing for yourself. And it's a lot of fun, a lot of interaction. And we also have holistic health for children and youth, um, teaching parents how to help their children, young people, um, <clears throat> how to help themselves, how to um, use herbs and different things for different children, different personalities, foods, to get the children on the right track while they're young so they won't have to struggle when they're adults. 
anyone who works with children or parents and families, that course is also available. The links are in my bio. Um, payment information is there as well. And if you have any questions, you can definitely hit me up directly. But I just want to tell you that I love you. It's a great day and it's a great time to be alive. And I appreciate your time and your attention. So keep shining. Keep doing well. And I look forward to um, connecting with you all at another time. I'll see you next time. Be well. Bye-bye.